What a privilege it is to worship our God. We give him thanks on this fifth Sunday of December 2023. Might I add our New Year's Eve, Sunday morning, divine worship. Good morning, everyone. I now invite you to stand, those who are in the sanctuary and those online for our call to worship. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. In order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So, so you, you are, are no, no longer a slave, slave but, but a, a child. child. And, and if, if a, a child, child then, then also an heir, heir through, through God. God. Amen. If you are able, please remain standing for our choruses of praise and affirmation. It will be, this is the day the Lord has made, and I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, which will be followed by our gathering him. As children of God, we sing joyfully together, this is a day that the Lord has made. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it this is a day that the lord has made i will rejoice and be glad in it this is a day this is a day that the lord has made. this is a year that the lord is near this is a year, this is a year that the Lord is near, that the Lord is near. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is a year that the Lord is near. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the yes, this is a year that the Lord is. Near. I will enter. Oh, I will enter. I will enter and I will say, I will say this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. 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 Me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me so Hallelujah. God has made us glad. Or gathering him. There's a song in the air. There's a star in the sky. There's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry. Oh 
song in the air. There's a star in the sky. There's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry. When the song rings, it's far wild, the beautiful the sing for the picture. our Savior and King. You may now be seated. We will have our prayer chorus. We have come into the house. Then we will have the prayer of adoration and confession, after which we'll sing the Lord's Prayer.
worship Him. pray. Mighty God, creator, healer, provider, we are in awe of your creation. Mighty God, we are amazed by your love. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God who sees. You are the God who protects. You are the God who gives us strength. Lord, you are our counselor, and our friend in times of trouble. Lord, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are our comforter. Lord, you love us with an everlasting love. You indeed are worthy to be praised. Lord, we are so privileged to be called your children and your grace and mercies, they know no bounds. Lord, you are the giver of all good gifts. Mighty God, we confess that we are not always ready to preach your word in season or out of season. We confess, Lord, that at times we do not seek your face. We do not make time to draw closer to you. Lord, we confess that at times we are friends with the world. We confess that our minds are not focused on the things of heaven, but are more focused on the things of this earth. Lord, our daily activities get in the way of just resting in your presence. We confess, Lord, that we do not seek out justice as you have commanded. Lord, even though you are the God who hears, we do not set aside enough time to talk to you and to present our petitions to you. Even though you are the God who helps and you are our strong tower, we sometimes run away from you instead of towards you. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for not casting our burdens upon you and trusting in you with all our hearts. Lord, be with us as we seek to grow and to do your will in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We continue Amen. with the Lord's Prayer that will be sung.
for a responsive reading. Our responsive reading is recorded in Psalm 148, verses 1 to 14. We'll be using the New Revised Standard Version. Please stand and let us read alternately. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heaven. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He, he has, has raised, raised up a horn for his people. people. Praise, praise for all his faithful, for, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Glory, glory be to, to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in, in the beginning, beginning, is now, is now and, and ever shall be. be world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. We'll now continue our worship through congregational fellowship. Just want to say welcome everyone in the sanctuary and online. As we continue with our church theme, keeping faith with the world in an ever-changing world, embracing the mystery, and specifically for the month of December, growing in favor with God as light. I now extend warm greetings to our church secretary, Sister Griffith, and invite her to extend further greetings and present us with the notices. Good morning, church. I thank our leader, brother, Deacon Andre, and um, I'll join him in extending a warm welcome to every worshiper with us this morning. It is good to see you on this, the last Sunday in the year 2023, and um, we await the coming of 2024 with joy, joyful thanksgiving to God. And so, on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Trevor Edwards, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you, to welcome those who are physically here in the chapel, those who are in the hall, and of course, those who have joined us virtually this morning. And if this is your first time with us at Babylon Baptist Church, then we'd love for you to just indicate to us so we can acknowledge your presence. If you're in the chapel, just raise your hand. I know you have been here before. <laughs> and as I look around, I wanted to say a special welcome to our brother, Andre Earl, KC. I know he came to hear Sister Sharon's preach this morning, and I'm sure she loves the back at him. Our speaker this morning is, is <laughs> our own sister, Dr. Sharon Earl Edwards, and um, as I said, she, she came back at him this morning, in addition to Rev. So she's well set this morning. Sister Sharon, we look forward, as usual, to hear from you. And I will not comment about anything. No PowerPoint, no comic strips, no, I will not say anything like that. I look forward to what you have to share with us this morning. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, friends, please note the following activities, and we invite you to share with us where possible. We note with regret the passing of Sister 
Isilda Thomas, Sister Icy for short. I don't know many of us remember Sister Icy, but she is based in the United States and she passed away on Christmas Day. We'll try to get a photograph of her to remind you of who is Sister Icy. We extend sincere condolences to her family and friends, and uh, we ask that you just bear family up in your prayers. You are cordially invited to join us later tonight for our watch night service, which begins at 9.30 p.m. And if you can come physically here at church, then we would really appreciate that. The first council meeting for the quarter will be on Thursday, January 4th, and we'll commence our usual time at 6.30 p.m. on the Zoom platform. Prayer and fasting will be on Saturday, January 6th, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. And as you know, we go to noon. And classes 2 and 6 will be leading prayer and fasting this Saturday morning. Commencing January 7th, worship will begin at 9.15, the worship service, that is, and Sunday school. And we're, as we say, we're going to call it now Family Bible Hour. We'll have Family Bible Hour starting at 8 a.m. It will continue until 9 a.m. And at 9.15, we'll start the Sunday morning worship service. Please come out. Make the effort to come out early because we love everybody to be a part of Family Bible Hour. The commissioning of deacons will also happen on January 7th, and this will happen during the morning service, which will commence at 9.15, as we said. And so um, we again invite you to come out and just share in a moment um, with the new deacons as they are commissioned. Please note also that our enrichment services will start on same Sunday, January 7th, a very busy Sunday, January 7th, and will continue through to Wednesday, January 10th. The services will start at 6.30 p.m. Well, the services start at 6.30 p.m. on Sunday, and at 7 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We look forward to seeing you. You know it's every year we have this Believers Enrichment series, and um, it really does in serves to enrich us as we take on the new year. So we look forward to full participation um, in the four nights. January 2 is the month for Keswick Convention, and this will start on Sunday, January 21st, and will continue to Sunday, January 28th. And uh, the sessions will be at Boulevard Baptist Church nightly, starting at 7 p.m. And of course, we will, we will share with you the lunchtime schedule as soon as it becomes available. And uh, we invite you to join in the lunchtime sessions where possible, the church nearest to you. And um, if you can't, and also you may join the 7 p.m. nightly service at Boulevard Baptist Church. Uh, the main speaker will be Dr. John Newfield. And um, we look forward to those sessions. And just to remind, to remind us that usually during the week of Keswick, on the, on the um, Wednesday night, we would, we would log on to that, to that um, log on or physically go there rather than our usual Bible study. So in the Bible study slot, we invite you to join the Keswick on Wednesday, the 24th of January. Class five will share with Golden Spring on fourth Sunday this month. And so as usual, we are prepared for that. And we invite you to continue to join us for midday meditation, Tuesdays 11.45 to 12.45, and for Bible study on Wednesdays starting at 6.30 p.m. And we continue in the hybrid format. That is, you may join us physically here at church for a Bible study on a Wednesday evening, or you can join on the Zoom platform. The starting time, 6.30 p.m. The soup kitchen is appealing for help. We need volunteers, so if you're able, and even if you can't cook, you know, you can maybe peel the potato, or you can maybe wash the dishes, you know, help. We need help. You can help with the shopping. So the soup kitchen is appealing for persons to assist if you can. 
You know, it's a good service we provide to the community, a bowl of soup on a Saturday. And um, if you are able to assist, then please contact Sister Dolores Treasure or Sister Princess Halliman Robinson. Please be reminded that offering for Sunday school can be done here at church or online. And we continue to collect non-perishable food items for the caring ministry of the church. So please feel free to drop off whatever you can anytime during the week. And um, if you have been given, we're thankful. And if you have not yet been given, then it's a good time to start the new year by providing support to the caring ministry of our church. As you would have heard, the month of January is very busy, so we invite you to just check your order of service. We usually have important dates, and so you can always remind yourselves, and as I said before, we invite you to share with us where possible. And although it's Christmas and though it's New Year coming, um, dengue is still out, and COVID is still around, so we continue to remind you to just take care of yourselves and your neighbors and take all of the precautions necessary. If you have been blessed today, if you require further ministry, such as prayers, if you need to make a decision for Christ, our pastor will be here with us, and Sister and Deacon Desmond Clark will also be able to speak with you at the service this morning. You may also indicate on the chat online, or you may call 823 7074 during the week, or you can send a WhatsApp to that same number, 823-7074. Brothers and sisters, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody out this evening for our New Year's Eve service at 9.30, and we pray for God's blessing on everyone as we enter 2024. Thank you. All right, thank you, Deacon Griffith. So we continue our worship by giving thanks to the Lord, or Jehovah Jireh, by just giving, him, giving back to him a portion of what he has blessed us with. So we'll be giving our tithes and offering, which will be followed by the doxology. Please stand for the offertory commitment. So we stand and declare that we are all cheerful givers. We, we commit, commit these tithes and our offerings to God as our first fruits, our expressions, expressions of gratitude for God's goodness. We give, we give because God so loved us that he first gave by sending his only son to die for our sins. We gladly proclaim that it is more blessed to give than to receive. We are, we are blessed, blessed as individuals and as a church family. We, we will continue, continue to give cheerfully for the building up of the kingdom of God and the work of his church because we know that this is what God desires of his faithful followers. Let us pray. Lord, you are the giver of all good gifts. Everything we have comes from you, Lord. We humbly ask that you accept this portion that we are presenting to you today for the building up of your kingdom, Lord. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 For your mind. The moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I have seen of the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You 
are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give Continuing with our congregational fellowship, we'll now have a testimony by Deacon Scarlett, which will be followed by our Sunday School Minute. Morning, sisters and brothers. Some while back, Sister Sharon and myself were talking and the argument came up how I met the Lord and she believed that I should share it with my sisters and my brothers. In 1967, I was sick unto death. And when I said unto death, I mean unto death. I spent 31 days, the whole month of May, at Kingston Public Hospital. I came out the 1st of June. And there and then I made a pledge to God. Not knowing what I was saying, yes, I grew up in Sunday school in center and of course and um so i knew of him but i did not have a relationship with god so i made this pledge not sure of what i was saying but i said lord if you get me back on my feet i will take the church for it no dance hall no theater and when I said no theater, I mean no theater because I used to go to the theater, the theaters, even seven days per week. And even sometime on Saturdays after the theater, then we would come to the dance hall. There were two dance halls by um, Grand Spring Forwards. One was Center, one was Blue Ribbon. And it was time we would have had Clash then, the Prince Buster, the Vin Edwards, the V Rocket, and all those big songs. So when those songs come in, it's our pleasure. But then 
I used to visit Barbican before the sickness, and then I, because of the sickness, of course, I stopped. But about October, God, you know, when you made a pledge with God, He kept His side of the bargain, and He's expecting us to keep our side. So He kept His. And October, I was on my feet, and I started to visit Barbican again. And um, in 1968, during the course of the Easter season, a week of crusade then, evangelistic meeting now, it's called, were announced, and the preacher would be the late Dr. Douglas Stokes. Of course, I had a girlfriend, lived with a girlfriend at the time, but made that pledge to the Lord and the Holy Spirit trying to get hold of me. Somehow, I visited the whole week of crusade. Um, I won't say much about my girlfriend, but... Um, Every time I, I comes to the, comes back from the meeting at church, she wouldn't, she was not at home. So I realized something was, was, was amiss, was not going right. Why continue? Because I made my pledge to the Lord and I want to try my best to keep it. So when I, get back home sometime I say to her the Lord is talking to me and I want to give my heart to him and she said to me you look you God can talk to you well Holy Thursday night was the last of that meeting Holy Thursday and I went home and I just get serious and told her that I'm ready to give my heart to the Lord. And I sat on my veranda and she packed some of her things, put it in her taxi, and go where she went. By this time, she ended up with my so-called best friend. Um, the Good Friday, get ready, smoke my cigarette, come to church. And, um, Reverend Morgan was the preacher then, had a baptism, and the first announcement after him, come to the Savior, now he is gently call it thee. Unfortunately, we don't sing those songs much again, you know, and I miss them. Um, and that first announcement and that first verse, I was at the aisle. That was 1968. Those days we had what we call, um, not believers, new believers class, it was um, anyway, we, 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 I came to, I, I was attending the, call it now, the new believers class. Um, I didn't get baptized until about July, August. And I was received at Barbican Baptist Church in August of 1968. I really tried my best to be involved in the church, Sunday School, President Youth Fellowship, representing the church at Annual Assembly, 73-75, teaching Sunday School, representing the Brotherhood at November Conference in various part of the island and we had a Sunday school in Hope Tavern where many people don't know um, the KCBA asked Barbican to spearhead that work just like Golden Spring so on Sunday morning our Sunday school was 8 o'clock service at 10 um, so we had a little time to prepare some of the cookings get back home, finish your cooking, and by 3.30 we were at Hope Tavern, a couple of us. 
Um, so now he worked was one of them. She's now in the nursing home, unfortunately. Um, our Leroy Sterling, he got called for the ministry. He went away, so it was leave to me and a couple of us from Babica. Um, Brother Leon Harris, his brother and sister Erica Maddox, arranged with some students from UE to help us with the Sunday school. Caribbean student, Jamaican student. There were two Caribbean students. Uh, one was Lana Williams, married Ford now back in Barbados. A uh, Clarence Charles from Guyana, Dr. Cla Clarence Charles, I heard he is in St. Lucia. And two of our local members, Sister Flavor R and Sister Myrna Alexander Allen wife of Reverend Allen in Boston. And so we would do that Sunday school, finish by five, and get back here for seven o'clock night service. I just say that to say this, that I made a pledge to the Lord, asking him to get me back on my feet, and I will take the church for it. I tried my best to involve myself in the church, as best as is humanly possible, of course, the choir. Um, and so I am hoping that God will continue to use me. I know lives in Portmore, so it's sort of difficult to get here, especially in the nights with the buses. Um, for example, the Monday evening of Sister Elliot's tribute. I was at the bus stop from 10 minutes past 4, and at 5.15, I had to go back home. And the day of the funeral, I leave my house at 10.30 and I get here about three minutes to one because of the buses. So I can't do as much and of course I'm not young, I'm 83. So I, I still can do what I can. But one thing I ask the Lord, especially as a son of man, is part of my prayer. Lord, use me to remind somebody that you exist and help me to have a word for somebody today at church. So when somebody come to church and tell you that church is boring, they didn't come with nothing. You don't come here expecting to be fed with a whole lot of things. It's what you bring you're going to go back home with. So don't tell you say church is boring. You come to sing, listen to a preacher, scripture read, and you praise your God and you worship and you fellowship. I'm going to close with two verses, short verses, of, of um, Ecclesiastic. Ecclesiastic, chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. And it read thus. When you vowest a vow unto God, therefore, King James Version, sorry. When you vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou vowest, thou shouldest vow and pay not. When we make a vow, sometimes some of us make pledges even to harvest and you're in your group and you want to, your group to look good and you want to feel good and you make pledges and we don't carry out our pledges. It's wrong. When we make a pledge to God, he's going to keep his side of the bargain. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He needs to say unless or when or except or because I will never leave you so nor forsake Keep our side of the bargain, please. God bless you. Thank you, Deacon Scarlett. Just ask the tech team to pause the um, Sunday school minute um, just for a second. So as you know, based on that testimony, just want to have more testimonies because I'm sure we have been blessed by what Deacon Scarlett has shared with us. And it just reminds us of the wisdom that we have here at Barbican 
and us as and the younger folks <laughs> can definitely take advantage of that wisdom. So thank you um, for sharing um, Deacon Scarlett. So we can have the Sunday school minute now after which I'll pray for the children. Jesus Christ existed as the world from the beginning of time. Now that is true. And number two, Jesus is simply God's son. He is not God. That is false because Jesus is all of them combined. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. That is true. Jesus is not responsible for all of creation. That is false. All human beings are reconciled, made right with God through Jesus Christ. Now that is true. All of us are created as God's living image. Number six, Jesus is the source of all life. Now that is true as he created all of us. Nothing exists in this world without Jesus did not create. That is also true, as he created every single thing on this earth. <laughs> yes, indeed, it's still cool to go to Sunday school. All right, so we'll now have the prayer for the children, followed by the prayer of intercession and thanksgiving, which will be done by Brother Ray Britton. I'll now ask the children in the sanctuary to come forward as we pray for them. And those online, please stand, and parents can gather around your children online. And even though it's on your program, there will be no um, junior church today. All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today pray for the protection of these children, Lord. Heavenly Father, we know that you are their buckler and their shield. Lord, we pray that their actions will be pure and upright. We pray, O oh God, that their parents will train them up in the way that they should grow so that they will not depart from it. Help us, Lord, to be attentive to their needs and be diligent in guiding them and growing them up in the faith to know about you and your son, Jesus Christ. Help them to understand, Lord, that even though this season they may see all the gifts and remember the gifts that they receive, Lord, we just help them to remember, Lord, that the most important gift is the gift of salvation, which they can receive through believing in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for those children who are not feeling so well dear lord we just pray that you will heal them and comfort them we pray for those who are hurting lord we just pray that they will call upon you have dialogue with you lord and know that they can pray to you and call upon you at any time we as we approach the new year and the new school year lord we just pray that their needs will be met according to whatever it is that they need to do well and to prepare for school. We pray, O oh God, that if they are having challenges at home, Lord, that you will just speak to the hearts 
of those who are taking advantage of them, Lord, those who are abusing them. Let us pray, O oh God, that their hearts will change and that the abuse will cease. Lord, when we look around the world, we see that there are so many distractions for these little ones, Lord. Everything is at their fingertips, Lord. And we know that the devil, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We just pray, O oh God, that the village that we have here will surround these children, Lord, and intercede on their behalf, day and night, dear Lord, and just help to protect them and to grow them in the right way. Lord, we give you thanks for these precious children, and we just pray for strength, and that we can continue to encourage them each day. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back. All right, Brother Britton. Good morning. Shall we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We pray that your will will be done in our lives and in our circumstances as we seek to serve you because of your goodness and your favor toward us. We are privileged compliments of your mercy. We stand at the end of this year and on the threshold of a new year. We look back and we say with thanks to you for your love, your protecting arms, your favor and goodness that attend us throughout the last year. And in acknowledgement of your goodness, we come this morning into your sanctuary, bringing our gifts of worship, our gifts of thanksgiving, our gifts of joy and of love. And we lay them on the altar and pray that you will accept these our offerings. May these offerings rise up to you as sweet smelling savor and that you will bless us, your children, who humbly, who humble ourselves before you as this year comes to a close. We stand on the horizon of a new year and ask that you hold our hands and lead us as only you can lead. We pray that you will assist us as we seek to follow you in all earnest. We commit ourselves to allow our lives to be led by you. We commit to be faithful to you and your service. We commit to love and serve each other as you have demonstrated in your word. We commit to watch over each other as demonstrated in your word. We commit to serve you with our time, our talent, <coughs> our resources, and our lives. We commit to pray for our leaders here at Barbican Baptist and to hold them up constantly before you. We commit to pray for the leadership of our country and to hold them up constantly before you. We commit to pray for the security forces and to hold them up constantly before you. We commit to pray for our leaders in business and to hold them up constantly before you. We commit to pray for every citizen in this country and to hold them up constantly before you. We pray for those in our country and with foul intent, the criminals, the murderers, the thieves, the scammers, 
and those who are bent on making it difficult for others, that you will visit them as you've visited Saul and cause them to have a conversion as Paul experienced. You have declared in your word that if our ways please you, you will give us the desire of our hearts. And so this morning, we pray that you will accept our prayers and our petition as we ask you to do good to us and our nation. We lift, you up, we lift up your name and proclaim thanks from thankful hearts and pray that your goodness and mercies will attend us in Jesus' name. We pray for countries around the world that is experiencing war, hunger, nakedness, and other suffering. We pray that you will intervene and make the difference as only you can. We pray for your messenger who shall bring your message to us this morning. We pray that every word will be what you intended for your people today. And we pray that it will water and nourish our souls and it will cause growth in your body. Father, we pray that you will continue to be our provider, our protector, and that your presence will attend us. We pray that you will hear our petition for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Britton. We continue our worship through proclamation and response. We'll have two readings from the New Testament. The first reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. This would be read by Sister Joni Lee. The second reading will be from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 8, will be done by Brother Griffith, verses 13, 20 to 27, 31 to 35, and 39 to 40, will be done by Joshua. Morning, church. The scripture reading for today as recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40, New King James Version. Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes has see, have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against, yes, a sword will pierce through, his, through your own soul also and the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess, 
the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband, with her husband, seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years, who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of the God was upon him. The word of the Lord. Good morning, church. It would be remiss of me to just leave it at good morning as I see Norman and Charmaine in church this morning. Good to be seeing you in church this morning. Thank you for your presence with us. Okay, a reading taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 8. I'll be reading from the um, New International Version. The caption to this reading is faith in action. The reading. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he's dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before, God, for before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is rewarded those whom earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things, not yet seen in holy fear, not yet seen in holy fear built an ark to save his family by his faith he he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith by faith abraham called to go to a place abraham when called to go to a place he would later receive his as his inheritance obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. A portion of the word of God. Um, as a footnote of some interest, it should be um, uh, noticed or noted that the word faith is mentioned some 11 times in this passage here. It is worthy of note and worthy of further reflection that we may address our minds to as the days proceed. Thank you very much. The scripture reading as recorded in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verses 13 to 27, 31 to 35, and 39 to 40. These, uh, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having received them afar off, and were assured of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth by faith. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed the, each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, 
when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel, and gave instruction concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents, because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward by faith, for he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he enjoyed as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she, her, when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also David and Samuel and the prophets, who through subdued kingdoms worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. And all these have obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Sister Joan Lee, Brother Griffith, and Joshua. All right, so before, I know we're eagerly awaiting to hear our choir. <laughs> but before we hear from the choir, just permit me um, to introduce our speaker for today. He's our own Sister Dr. Sharon Earl Edwards. As we know, she's an author, she's a poet, and right? she's also the superintendent here for the Sunday School of our church. By the way, she's also married to our pastor, <laughs> Reverend Trevor Edwards. And we know of Ade and our resident musician here, Francois, <laughs> right? Her pride and joy. So, I pray that the Lord will strengthen you as you bring the message to us today. All right, so we'll now hear from our choir at, here at Barbican Baptist. Then we will sing our preparatory chorus, after which the next voice you will hear is that of our sister Sharon.
Thank you to the choir. You see what we've been missing. <laughs> All right. So we'll now have our preparatory course, followed by we'll hear from our speaker. don't have to preach again. You can go home. Somebody in the choir just told me that. Them run me after Deacon Scarlett gave such a powerful testimony. Good morning, church. Thank you, Deacon Scarlett. I learned so much more from that testimony, and I'm sure half of you never know Deacon Scarlett used to go dance. We thank the Lord for taking us to this the 365th day of the year, history for us at Barbican, in many ways. This will be our last 8 a.m. divine worship service, and history for me in some other ways. It's the first and probably, hopefully, the only time that I'll be giving a message in the morning and rev in the evening. <laughs> so it is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord and to see all you wonderful people. Permit me again to underscore the welcome to everybody. Special welcome to my sister, friend, batchmate Pauline and her husband Lloyd. Thank you for coming. As well as to my baby brother, <laughs> who is better known than I am, Andre, and my dear friend Katisha, who you know she has sung for you already, right? So thank you all for being here, and we just want to pray now and ask the Lord to guide us as we reflect. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we reflect on your goodness, Lord, w in all our life you have been faithful, and you have been so good. And so with every breath we want to just praise you and reflect on your goodness. Even as we spend time in your word and spend time being encouraged as we end this year and approach the new year, I pray that your words will reach each of us exactly where they need to reach us. And that every single person here and those online will find a specific word for them. Continue to speak to me and through me and be glorified in your word. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, what a year this has been. Raise your hands if you can say, this year has been mostly good for me. All right. Wonderful. I'm not sure where my hand is yet. Raise your hands if you say, boy, this year, and we have seasons. This has been a challenging, mostly challenging and stressful for me. You're okay to raise your hands. Yes, yes. And if it has been a mixture of both, challenging and stressful, I think this has been for me. Boy, there was a point where I thought that the St. Thomas Road was going to mad me. I don't know if you know how close I came you know, to losing it. I think somebody in here, probably all Sister Donna, probably all know, you know, the day I crashed into her car in the parking lot here. 
the way I was stressed. I thought it was a boy between disaster by daylight and nightmare at night. That is how bad it has been for the past few years. And I thought I was going to witness a reenactment of the Moran Bay Rebellion, the way the people were feeling. But the dawn is coming. It was a true test of faith, but God, but God. Then we had, of course, so many deaths, many sudden uh, within us, within the church, within our own family, our extended family, and I had of colleagues as well. Serious health challenges of many, including my Sunday school ministry team, many, and I, again, just want to, you know, lord the faithful service of the Sunday school ministry team, because some of you don't know how much some of the members were going through challenges this year. Yet, we also had celebrations, like Rev's 40th anniversary of ordination, my wedding anniversary a couple days ago, Sunday school and church anniversary, election of new deacons, the birth of my friends, one of my friends' first grandchild yesterday, right, for, uh, her and first grandchildren, and high points for me personally included the emotionally healthy spirituality and emotionally healthy relationship courses that I did uh, because they really helped to ground me and keep me sane and help me to grow a little more in the Lord. And that was after I'd observed the impact on another family member. We had so were exposed to it in church council as well, and we did some in Sunday school retreats, and Rev did the emotionally healthy relationship course in Bible study. And for those who missed it, you missed a lot. However, good news, the emotionally healthy spirituality course is coming up, and Rev will be doing that in Bible study as well. I am just so thankful to God for the gift of life and for his goodness, despite all the challenges. Also, before I go any further, I just want to also acknowledge and thank all who participated in the service. The readers, the leader, Brother Andre, the musicians, the choir, good to see you, really back in full form, and, the, and Brother Francois, Thank you. It's the only time you're going to be called my brother, right? <laughs> and, and all who participated, praise team, thank you very much for your participation. And sometimes we leave them out, but where would we be without our communications ministry? And so thank you, Sister Tamar, and I'm not si sure who I'm seeing behind the glass there, and our ushers. We give God thanks because faithfulness in service is very important and none of us would be able to do everything and that's why God puts us all together. Just live by faith, don't grow weary, don't lose heart. Faith, as Brother Paul highlighted, the word faith has, is heavy in that passage on Hebrews and as I was reflecting, boy, I'd love to probably spend a long, long time doing reflections on the passage from Hebrews. We have limited time, so I'll be raising some highlights. But faith is not just a feeling as we know it's an action. Ramona Carroll put it this way, faith is putting all your eggs in God's basket and counting your blessings before they hatch. I'll say that again, faith is putting all your eggs in God's basket and counting your blessings before they hatch. We exhibit faith when we invest in a startup company, when we prayerfully answer the call to serve in a ministry of the church, when we sacrifice for our children's well-being and education because we see their potential, when we practice environmental conservation to protect future generations, when we invest time and energy in building special relationships, when we take a new vaccine, when we work hard to get a degree or certification, believing this will generate career success. When we invest in our health and fitness, expecting long life and or a healthy future. When we take a plane, taxi, or bus. When we step boldly into the future, the unknown, after pondering the question, what would you do 
if you were not afraid. When you will marry after a failed marriage, after asking the question, what if, if it doesn't work out? And answering with, what if it does? After prayerful support, counseling, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. These are some ways in which faith is exhibited in the world in general. So anybody who speaks about not having faith, whether they are Christian or not, we do exhibit faith in many ways at many times. The question is, in whom do we exhibit our faith? On whom and on what? Our passage, and I'm going to ask you, if you can, keep your Bibles open because the Hebrews passage really should come from Hebrews 10 way over to Hebrews 12. And I'm going to read some excerpts just from the passage for you. So Hebrews 10, 38 to 11, 3 is where I'm, I'm reading. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Then I skip to Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who, for the sake of joy that was before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Considered, consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary in your souls or lose heart. The New King James Version puts Hebrews 10.38 this way. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. And so as I think the word of the Lord, as I think about faith, the just shall live by faith. The first part of the takeaway is going to be just. And so are we the just? Just live by faith. Or not the title just live by faith, but just live by faith. And so the encouragement for all of us is just live by faith. And the second part we get from the passage in Hebrews 12, verse 3, he, him that is Christ who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary in your souls or lose heart. Do not go weary. Do not lose heart. So putting it all together, the sum total of my message is this. Just live by faith. Do not grow weary. Do not lose heart. So we say, just live by faith. Do not grow weary. Do not lose heart. So if you're extra tired and you can't keep your eyes open and you write that down and you want to go to sleep, you know, I pray you don't. Just live by faith. Do not grow weary. Do not lose heart. Everybody you meet, just tell them that. As they're facing the new year, just live by faith. Do not grow weary. Do not lose heart. And I want to welcome Rev, who has joined us on his way to Golden Spring. And so he has a full day this morning at Golden Spring and this evening here at Barbican. So we're grateful that you are here in person, Rev. The there are other, I'll be reading some other translations of it so we'll understand this whole Hebrews 11 because 
We, it's sandwiched, as I said, by the Hebrews 10, reminding us that. And then the Hebrews 12, 1 to 3, last week, Reverend Taylor spoke about his baptismal verse that his pastor preached. And I want to say that Hebrews 12, 1 to 3 is my baptismal passage that my pastor, the Reverend Taylor, preached when I was baptized donkeys years ago. And so it's near and dear to my heart as we press on, as I press on, and as I encourage you to press on. Another translation speaking about the triumphs of faith speaks from the Amplified, and I'll just highlight the last part. Faith comprehends as fact. The, so faith is the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. And the J.B. Phillips New Testament says, now faith means putting our full confidence in the things we hope for. It means being certain of things we cannot see. It was this kind of faith that won their reputation for the saints of old. And it is after all only by faith that our minds accept as fact that the whole scheme of time and space was created by God's command. That the world which we can see has come into being through principles which are invisible. So we just live by faith. Do not grow weary. Do not lose heart. Other highlights from the scripture I want to, as we said, the whole passage. We're taking it, the whole passage, but I'm picking out some things for us to think of. Is this as well from the Jamaican New Testament. Hebrews 11, 1 to 2. When we trust in a God, it makes we sure about the sitting them where we hunger hope so we are going to get. And we know, said the sitting them, where we can't see. Them they, them they, they feel true. At this make God did happy with, we father, father them. God did happy with, we father, father them. May God be happy with us. So, faith is the assurance in uncertain times. For instance, a financial crisis, a pandemic, health challenges, that God will come through that everything will be all right, though things look chaotic and hopeless in the natural. It's what makes us say or sing, whose report do you believe? We shall re believe the report of the Lord. And coming through may be in different ways when we say God comes through, as we have read from the passage. Faith is not only the assurance in uncertain times, it's conviction in the unseen. What would make a pioneer or missionary step out of their comfort zone, convinced that God is calling, guiding, and equipping them? What would make, for instance, the Reverend Donald Stewart, some of us saw that, that testimony online recently, and his wife, in their senior years, go on missionary trip to Africa, and, and they are currently in Ghana. Faith is about that as well. Faith is stepping into the unknown. So we speak about uncertain times, the unseen, stepping into the unknown, making major life decisions based on faith. Sometimes to leave our corporate job to go into full-time ministry, to leave a mega church or a larger church to serve in a smaller one, going back to school in later years to study, a major career change, migrating, returning home after being abroad, medical mission, Example Haiti, like Sister Michelle and Sister Jean did. These are some of the things that are stepping into the unknown, but that is done by faith. Changing Sunday school time and divine, divine worship service time in January 2024, convinced that God is leading us. Growth in expecting growth, numerically and spiritually, coming out of that change. As we said before in Hebrews 11, 3, by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. Or, as e the ESV has it, the, the universe was created by the word of God. Now this is important because this takes us back to Genesis 1, 1 and John 1, 1. If we don't believe that in the beginning God created the earth, if we don't believe that in the beginning the was the word and the word was God and the word was with God, then the rest of the Bible doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. We believe 
because we believe that God created the world out of nothing. That is why we can say, is there anything too hard for God? Because as the story is told of some scientists who, and it's a story, who decided that they were now equal to God because they could make man out of dust. So they said, God, we we'll catch up. We can do this. And so they were outside. They went outside to prove it. And they put down their hands to take up some dirt. And God said, mm -mm, make your own dirt. And so the reminder is, God made the universe out of nothing. And nothing, therefore, is too hard for God. Hebrews 11.6 says, and you know, I love plenty Bible. The word of God speaks for itself. So we will look at some examples later of the heroes of the Hall of Faith and our own heroes. However, Jamaica New Testament 11.6, Hebrews 11.6 says, Now if somebody not trust in a God, them can make him happy none at all. Because anybody will come, come worship God, after belief first, say God de be true. And that he might go do some, some whole heap of good sitting for the one them will look for him. Ad, ad. So we need to look for him ad, ad. God has said in Isaiah 44, I am the Lord, the maker of all things, who stretches out the heavens, who spreads out the earth by myself. When we are speaking of faith here, there are different ways we can look at faith. There are three way, three, one classification to from a Christian perspective that there are three types of faith. There is saving faith. That is what we come to when Brother Scar Scarlett says he comes to God in faith. He gives his heart to the Lord. All of us who are Christians are only Christians if we have come to God by faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 reminds us, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. So none of us can pat ourselves on our shoulder and say, you know how hard my work? And you know how decent I am? That is why. No, no, no. It is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, according to scripture alone, for God's glory alone. That is how we are saved. So that's saving faith. Then some people have the gift of faith. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 9 tells us a, speci a special that it's one of the spiritual gifts. So we have the saving faith, we have the gift of faith. And this gift of faith, some people get, just like you get other gifts. Uh, it's a special measure or manifestation of faith given by the Holy Spirit to certain individuals for specific situations or tasks within the context of the Christian community. It's an extraordinary and unwavering trust in God's power and promises, even in the face of insurmountable obstacles. Hence, they are able to inspire and encourage others by their strong and confident reliance on God. And especially when God's intervention and supernatural provision are needed. And the purpose of this gift of faith is to build up the whole community. So some people have the gift of faith. So we are all are saved, those of, of us who are saved, because of saving faith. Some people on top of that, have the gift of faith. Now, the third one, which is what we'll be focusing mostly, is living by faith. And we are all called to live by faith. And that's what Hebrews 11 is mostly about. Although some of those heroes in the hall of faith look to me like they also had the gift of faith as well. So as we look at examples of the heroes of the hall of faith, this is to encourage us. As we look in Hebrews 12, it will remind us that we'll be encouraged as well by the cloud of witnesses that will encourage us, cheering us on. And we will move forward with enthusiasm because we should run this race, laying aside the weight and sin which holds us back, and focus. We will have the enabling to run this race by looking to Christ, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. So don't go weary. Don't lose heart. So just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. And the last bit of scripture I'll read from you at this point 
is again from the Jamaica New Testament because I want us to just soak in the word specifically from different angles because it will touch us in different ways. Hebrews 12, 1 and 3 from the Jamaica New Testament. So like how one crowd of people, they all bowed round we and them show, show we are ready, how we trust in a God. We have to dash off everything. We are slow it down in the race. Yeah. The sin we tie up with foot, easy, easy. We have to dash them off, man, and run the race where they're in front of we, and now we're out upon the way. Only if you look upon Jesus, look how the wicked sinner them treat him well bad, but him all on and press through the same way. Only if you, only if you think about that, so you no get tired and won't give you up. No get tired, no one give up. So, having repeated this in different ways, and that is stuck with you, now I'll just do some other highlights. As we look at the book of Hebrews in general, Hebrews was written by an unknown author to an unknown audience. It's not one of Paul's letters, it doesn't have his style, it, it doesn't use the type of Greek that he used, he used a more simple type of Greek, but it's a more complex style. And it is thought, though, to be written to people, the Jewish people, to encourage them to deal with persecution. And so it was thought to be written by somebody who was a Jew themselves, but very fluent, fluent in Greek and this higher level of Greek. And Apollos is one of those who is thought to fit that bill, okay? Especially some, some references to Egypt and so on that come from it. But it could be many other people, including Aquila or Priscilla. We speak of the Hall of Faith, recognizing that these heroes in the Hall of Faith are not superheroes. Because we might think of them and say, oh, I could never be like that. No, we can all be heroes in God's Hall of Faith by expressing faith in God. In this passage in Hebrews 11, there were 17 named persons, as well as other honorable mentions of others. And so we, they are Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses' parents. And if we, if we, if we pull their names from somewhere else, we'd actually get 18 because that they are Amram, Amram and Jochebed. Then Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel. Those are the 17 named ones. Then there are others who are alluded to. Some we could recognize by the description and some we might not. Some other just general highlights from the Hebrews as part of the background. Noah had never seen rain, by the way. Okay? Uh, that was interesting to me as I was doing my study. I recognized that prior to the flood, the, the earth was watered. It is believed, based on the scriptures, and no description of rain before the flood, that the earth was only watered from the rivers. So it was watered upwards, not from above, okay? And there are passages that deal with that, such as Genesis 2, 5 to 6, where the streams came up and watered the earth, the whole surface of the ground. Then another, just a little bit of information for interest. Of course, we know David. Everybody knows David. He's, he's the only one in the Bible named David, and his name means beloved. Jephthah, his mother was a prostitute. He was an outside child ignored by his brothers until he, they wanted him to fight the Ammonites. And then they just rope him in, right? But it's remi a reminder that our family of origin doesn't define us. God does. Rahab is in the genealogy of Jesus. So she is a prostitute, was a prostitute, and she's the great-great-grandmother of King David. Uh, J the Jamaica New Testament says, Rahab wedded sleep with man for money. So to make it very clear what that was about. Barak didn't want to lead the army into war alone. I'm giving you this background so later when we have a little bit of the summary, it will stand out. And he asked Deborah to go with him. And she said, I'll go with you. However, God is going to give final victory into the hands of a woman. And she didn't mean herself I actually, but it was JL, JL who did that. Samson. When you look at his life, you'd wonder what is he doing there in some respects. But again, it's a reminder that the sum total of his life is not defined by the poor choices he made in his lifetime. 
And the Spirit of God came on him one more time, three, and he said, Lord, use me one last time. And 3,000 Philistines died at that time. We make our choices. Sometimes we don't avoid the consequences. However, God still forgives us and redeems us and uses us. And the final little one, that I, well, second to last little highlight I want to bring from here. This was just an interesting, I suppose, trivia. Somebody working out something mathematically because the Israelites crossed the Red Sea in one night. And so they were about three to three and a half million. So somebody did the math and said for them to all cross in one night, it meant that they had to cross 5,000 abreast, 5,000 abreast, and that means that the width of the gap in the sea at that time had to be about three to three and a half miles. That's one theory about it. So that, that was very interesting. Of course, you know, some people have the theory that Red Sea wasn't a Red Sea. It meant the Sea of Reeds, and therefore it was only six inches of water, so it was easy to cross. Well, the truth of the matter is either way, there was a miracle because if it was only six inches of water and the Egyptian army drowned in that, then, you know, what can we say, right? God is good all the time. So as we look now at our Luke passage, because today is also unique in that it is Christmas Sunday and New Year's Eve. <laughs> Technically speaking, Christa Christmas Sunday is the Sunday after Christmas. So our Luke passage re reminds us about Simeon and Anna. But in general, the faith of the Christmas story is all about faith as well. We see the, the faith of Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, and in today's reading, as I said, Simeon and Anna. Simo Simeon, he was righteous. He was devout in the faith. He believed the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Imagine then if a plague came near him, or COVID, or the war, or a natural disaster, you know, he would be at peace because he knew that he wasn't going to see death till he saw the Messiah, you know. And then he praised God, saying, Now you are dismissing your servant in peace. And he blessed Jesus and his parents and prophesied over them. Then think of Anna, the prophet, who was 84 at the time when she saw Jesus, widowed after only seven years of marriage. She never left the temple. She worshipped there with fasting and prayer day and night. And she now spoke, praise God, and spoke about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. These people of faith are also heroes in the hall of faith. And not to talk about our modern-day heroes of faith, in case you think I'm just stopping there. We're now going on to our modern-day heroes of faith. And I'm starting with some of our heroes of faith at Barbican, because starting with Deacon James Scarlett, you know. And thanks again, Deacon Scarlett, for the testimony. You heard Anna was 84. I heard Deacon Scarlett. I had to ask him again, did you hear how old he said he was? Oh, he mumbled it. I can't tell him. 83. He said it in the testimony. I said, did I hear you say you were 83? Okay. And look at it. We've heard the testimony. And there are other things others of us know that he's been through. And with all of that and his subsequent move to Port Moran, at his age, with his challenges, he is faithful in attendance, public transportation, two buses to come here. And some of us, myself including, sometimes find it hard to come in care. Come on. Not to talk of those who live in walking distance. Come on. Really and truly, we have no excuse. I'm going to summarize them in general, so I'll just say that and move on to our late deacon, Perline Elliott, whose funeral we had a less than two weeks ago. Again, and it came out, her faithfulness, her faithful, reliable record-keeping, floral arrangements, property management for the church, authentic, known at her workplace for being a strong Christian. Her boss didn't want her to leave when she was retiring and all of that kind of stuff. And I remember her last duet with our dear sister Dolores. In times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. He's the one. 
And so again, we have right here our heroes in our hall of faith. Deacon Joy, Deacon Joy, I know you're listening online. She's overseas. But again, faithful in her attendance, even now. She served faithfully in the clinic, even in her retirement. Has had and some know many, many trials and supporting many family members with trials. But resilient despite all of that. And we well remember, Pastor will remember her sugar-free cake and cheesecake for Pastor. Her kindness as well. One of her former Sunday school students, who is now a Sunday school teacher, speaks about how when he was ill, she went to his house to look, uh, look for him and those things. Those kinds of things people don't forget. These are our heroes in the hall of faith. She's still faithful in church council, Bible study, midday meditation, online service right now, even overseas. Then, of course, I cannot leave out my star pupil, Deacon Gilly. Because Deacon Gilly, I call her star pupil because Deacon Gilly is, can I tell them your age, Deacon Gilly? <laughs> she just celebrated last month her 90th birthday. She's a lifelong learner, faithful in hospitality ministry, cradle roll ministry at every baby dedication, and still attending Sunday school, our oldest Sunday school student, Deacon Gilly. And I want to highlight as well Deacon Margaret, who has had her own struggles. There are many others, you know, I'm just highlighting some so we know we have our heroes right here. Disenfranchised at work, pull over the coals, but serving faithfully. She, she attended TDM and did the full course. She's serving at Barbican and Golden Spring. Most mornings she comes to Barbican first and then goes to Golden Spring. And not only that, she attends Bible study still here. She goes to Golden Spring during the week and does study with them. These are our heroes in the Hall of Faith. And what I notice about many of them is they're involved in Sunday school. You know, that's my pet one, right? They are involved in music ministry, but they are not only giving out. They don't only attend when they have things to do, but they also receive because we can't give what we don't receive. So they come to Bible study. They come to Sunday school. They sit at Jesus' feet, and they share stories that encourage others. These are our heroes right here in our hall of faith. And if we want to know how to take that journey. It's not like they just wake up one day and reach seniority and all their life they were just busy and then they say when I retire. Some of you might say well you know they retire that is why I tell you if they did not do it faithfully before they would not be doing it now. And so that's important for us to remember. I also want to just highlight you know things don't always work out perfectly for us and we know that being faithful doesn't mean that, that, that th we see good happen. And one of the persons I want to highlight, not from Barbican, but hi his story is well known, is a good friend of my husband, Pastor Raul Tyson. You know, years ago he was paralyzed by a bullet, wheelchair bound, but continued to preach for the Lord and so on. And then after that he had a stroke, which affected his speech. You know, and he has had other challenges since. And you said, you know, sometimes when we talk, we say, boy, that is a lot for one person. But every time I see him, and I saw him up to earlier this month at a function, he's smiling. He looks joyful. And, you know, he's rehabilitating his speech and all of that. And again, just a mark of resilience and faithfulness to God. The final one I'd highlight before we go back to our stories, the Reverend Jerry Gallimore. He has a book called Living by Faith, and he was one of my former leaders at Bethel growing up. Head of Youth for Christ, Jamaica, then international, and other things along the way. Retired as a pastor eventually in Florida. If you read his book, and I tell you, get his book, it's on Kindle and it's in print. 
some of the things that are highlighted is his wife, though not guilty, was arrested by the FBI, handcuffed in her front lawn in her pajamas. You know, um, and on the positive, on the other hand, somebody offered them furniture when they just moved because they didn't want furni the, the furniture in a model house, so they got the house fully furnished. Goes both ways. He, Jerry, was lost in Ukraine one time, couldn't speak the language, and didn't know how to, to get to, I didn't even know the name of the place that he was to get back to when he went for lunch. But, <laughs> but God provided for him, and that was the day before he was to travel. He, he lost his retirement money in one of the pyramidal schemes and didn't have any money to bury a family member as a result. But God provided the way for that to work out that he was able to follow through. And all of this after leaving a lucrative job. This part I didn't know before I read it. At Mead Johnson, just when he was promoted is when he wondered why he wasn't feeling so good about it. And his wife, he didn't even bother to tell his wife that because a long time before she told him, why, when are you going to stop what you're doing and go into full-time ministry? He was called and eventually he did. So he himself in his ministry journey was almost arrested in China, <laughs> accused of trying to enter the country illegally. So these are just some of the things. And his refrain, refrain is Psalm 66, 16. Come and listen you that fear the Lord and let me tell you what he has done for me. And so, Sister Jennifer tried to set me up still enough. She said, I'm not going to tell you all of that kind of stuff. I left out the PowerPoint story this time, both because of our changes in our setup and not to traumatize our communications team at the last minute. But I did write a poem for you. And it's called Just Live by Faith. And it, as, it, as you listen to it, See if you can locate yourself anywhere in any of these questions. Because it's really some questions that I'm asking. And I locate myself there in some of it. None of us will locate ourselves in everything. But see if you can and remember the theme. Are you jealous of your siblings? Are they jealous of you? Follow Abel's example. Give God your best. Just live by faith. Don't grow weary, don't lose heart. And after this, when I said just live by faith, you're going to say don't grow weary, don't lose heart. Like Enoch, have you been quietly enjoying a special, close, lifelong relationship with God? No limelight, no fuss, keep on walking. Just live by faith. Like Noah, is God calling you to do something unusual? to dare to be different, to stand out for him in your community, at home, school, work, at the risk of being a laughing stock, take action anyway. Just live by faith. Don't grow weary, don't lose heart. Is God calling you out of your comfort zone when you're feeling settled and well-established, whether it's your home, your job, your country? Has God made a promise to you that he is yet to fulfill? Are you tempted like Abraham to help God out? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Like Sarah, have you faced the pain of childlessness? Is your biological clock ticking loudly like a bomb? Or has it stopped ticking altogether? Are you wondering what God has in store for you? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Has your family been wounded by favoritism and deception? Notwithstanding that, will you bless your children and grandchildren like Isaac and Jacob? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Despite being a victim of family abuse, human trafficking, sexual harassment, or false imprisonment, will you remain hopeful for the future like Joseph, confident in God's redemption and deliverance? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Have you felt pressured by society or circumstances to give up your child by abortion or adoption? 
Or have you, like Moses' parents, Amram and Jochebed, had to fight for your child's survival against all odds? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Whether you felt like an outcast because of your nationality, race, gender, or even a previous sinful lifestyle, do you believe that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath like Rahab? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Has fear dominated your choices? Do you feel weak and inadequate for the task God has called you to fulfill, like Gideon? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Are you reluctant to obey God's specific instruction to you alone unless you get company? Have you responded to God's clear directions by laying down your own terms for their fulfillment? In other words, has your obedience been partial or, like Barak, conditional, yet God still helps you? While God doesn't want lone ranger Christians, sometimes we are called to act alone. Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Has your appetite for food, sex, or pleasure marred your ability to use your God-given con gifts consistently for God's glory? Has moral weakness detracted from or undermined your strength like Samson? Are you broken and humbled by your failures? Are you willing to repent and allow God to use you once more for his glory despite your failures? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Do you feel like an outcast, rejected by your family or community, an accident of birth, ashamed of your parents, the outside child, the result of an unwanted pregnancy, born at the wrong time or being the wrong gender? Do you feel used at home, work, or church, only sought for what you can do, a means to an end, like Jephthah? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Do you passionately worship and serve God with your creativity, your music, dance, and poetry? Are you courageous and committed to the Lord? Do you love God with your whole heart, yet are saddened by the ways you let God down as a leader or as a parent, like David? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Did you grow up in the church have a spiritual parent or mentor? Did you receive a special call? Are you in full-time ministry, feeling lonely and saddened by the waywardness of the persons you lead and serve? Have you, like Samuel, remained faithful despite it all? Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Have you been disappointed by unmet expectations? Promises not fulfilled despite your faithfulness. Have you experienced more hardship than happiness? More setbacks than successes? More liability than prosperity? Just live by faith. Don't go weary. Don't lose heart. Like these heroes in the hall of faith, we are ordinary and weak, flawed and frail, sometimes passionate, but imperfect. God wants us to trust him, surrender, repent, be humble, obedient, persistent, willing, available, and purposeful. Just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. How can you do it, you might ask? What will help you fulfill each task? God turns your weaknesses to strength. These heroes cheer you on at each length. Let go of burdens of sin and weight. Keep your eyes on Jesus. To him, run straight. He started the race, died for our sins, perfects our faith. He's seated right now on the throne of grace. So we say finally, just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. So as we come towards the end, 
uh, we are so further on the application. We want to follow our, the examples of our heroes, both our local heroes. You see what they did? They spent time in personal and corporate fellowship with God. We cannot be heroes in the Hall of Faith. We can't walk forward if we are not constantly in communion with God. It's not possible. Rev always reminds us there are no Lone Ranger Christians. When I asked a late family friend years ago, when I was a child and she had reached 35 years of marriage, I said, it seems so, you know, big to me. And I said, oh, you reached that. She said, one day at a time, Sh Shari, one day at a time. And in the same way, continue to walk with God one day at a time, my brothers and sisters, one day at a time. Be faithful in the little things. Just show up. Prayerfully ask God to help you to fear less, as Rev preached on Christmas morning. Move forward with what you already know and ask God to redirect you if you are off course. Also, as I said earlier, it's been special. What has helped me is watching the impact of the Emotionally Healthy Spiritually Discipleship course on a family member, and it has helped me as well. Having pursued it, I've seen fruits already in improved connection with God, family members, and church brothers and sisters, even having difficult conversations and making apologies where necessary, and greater connection with myself, greater mindfulness, short accounts, clarification of expectations, as I continue to live by faith, not grow weary, and not lose heart. And so, I commend to you the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality course as part of the application, part of your next steps. There you will learn that it is impossible to be spiritually mature unless we are also emotionally mature. And so we will look at the problem of emotionally unhealthy spirituality, knowing ourselves that we may know God, and dealing with grief and loss, enlarging our soul through grief and loss. Those are some of the things that will be coming up. And the emotionally he healthy relationship, we looked at the community temperature reading, exploring the iceberg. When we have anger on the top, there's lots of feelings below that. And things like listening, how we can listen to people well and how to have a clean fight. These are some of the things that were dealt with. So stay in community if we are going to live by faith, okay? Remember the cloud of witnesses. Let go of the obstacles, and with God's help, endeavor to eliminate sin in our lives. Persevere, keep our eyes on Jesus. Remember the price he paid for us. Anytime we are tempted to give up, look at what Jesus paid for us and say, no, God, I can't let you down now. I can't give up now. Gone too far from where I've come to. Nobody said the road would be easy, but I don't believe you brought me this far to leave me. So next steps, EHS, Bible study. Sign up, join. It's hybrid. Come to church if you can. If not, join online. And if you can, get the workbook, the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality Workbook by Pete Scazzero. It will help you even more. Another way, and January, as Sister Jennifer told us, is jam-packed with things for our enrichment. So believers enrichment, show up, okay? Again, this is another way we build that faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, okay? And then there is Keswick. So as I said, January is jam-packed with opportunities to, to fill up the cups, and then we continue with the daily filling, our own personal devotions, Come into Sunday school, of course. Uh, Sunday school, come regularly. If it wasn't convenient before, now it's maybe more convenient. Come regularly. And if it was more convenient before, please make the sacrifice and still make it regularly, nonetheless. If you have not experienced salvation, uh, then your first step really is that you need to accept that you're a sinner, can't save yourself, Believe that Jesus died on the cross to save your sins and rose again. Commit your life to him in faith. And you can speak after to me, to Sister Deslin, as you do. As I said, Rev is going up to Golden Spring if you want to do that. To remember that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Don't let the year end without making that commitment to Christ. And if you are a Christian who hasn't been in a regular fellowship, whether you are here today for the first in a while or you're online, maybe since the pandemic, 
or due to other challenges of business or guilt or failure, return, 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 return. Be active, be growing. And homework. You know that I always give homework. So this is your homework. One, this week, and if possible, even today, thank a hero in Barbican Hall of Faith and or someone whose faith has made a difference, someone else whose faith has made a difference in your life. Example, a parent, grandparent, Sunday school teacher, leader, pastor. Give thanks to those persons. Two, that's so thank somebody. You never know when your word of encouragement is just what they need at this time so that they don't grow weary or lose heart. Two, encourage a new member. So you're thanking somebody, but you're also encouraging. Encourage a new member or young person in the faith. You don't know again when they are about to grow weary and lose heart. Encourage them. And three, invite someone to Sunday school and church first Sunday in January so that they will grow in the faith. So in summary, we have looked at faith, and we know that it's in the uncertain, the unknown, the unseen, biblical faith, living by faith. We've looked at the heroes in the Hebrew Hall of Faith, ordin ordinary persons who lived extraordinary lives because of God's enabling. We've looked at some of our modern-day heroes, some of whom are here with us today, others who have gone before us. We, we were reminded that they're saving faith, the gift of faith, and living by faith. And today's focus has mainly been on living by faith. We were reminded that the just shall live by faith. As we look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, and are cheered on by the great cloud of witnesses, we can run with perseverance and not grow weary or lose heart. So, whatever your situation, if you are going through X, like hero Y, hear them say, just live by faith. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. God bless you. Let us pray. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to ask, is there anybody here who has never asked Jesus to be their Lord and Savior and who at this time is interested in saving faith? You've never ever asked God to be your Savior. If so, please raise your hand. As we remain prayerful, we ask, is there anyone here who recognizes that you have the gift of faith? That special gift of faith. If so, raise your hand. And, of course, we all, and I see that hand, we will all live by faith and not grow weary or not lose heart and take the next step that God has in store for us. So God, you who have called us, you who have given us so many examples of people of faith, just a few of whom are listed in that passage, just a few of whom we know in person, help us to remember that even when we feel weak and in inadequate, even when we have failed you several times, even when we feel like giving up, when we feel weary, when we feel drained, when we feel so stressed by the cares of this world, that you have called us to look to you, Lord Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So help us to run with perseverance the race that you have set before us. And so if there's anyone who is on the brink of giving up, Lord, who has already given up on themselves and who may just be thinking, I, don't, I can't go a minute more. Come alongside them even now, dear Lord. Undergird them and help them too to cry out to you for help and help us to respond accordingly as you call us. Help each of us, Lord, to live by faith in 2024 and beyond, not to grow weary, not to lose heart and so that you will be glorified by our faithfulness thank you for your goodness to us in jesus name amen
Thank you, Sister Sharon, for that message. So faith is putting all your eggs in God's basket. All right, so I'm sure the local Hall of Fame, Hall of Faith members, when they looked at Hebrews and they saw these names, they themselves would have thought, this is a hard task for me. But we must all remember that with God, all things are possible. So we as members as well can look at these Hall of Faith, Deacon Livermore, late Deacon Elliot, Deacon Gilly, and also know that if we spend time in the Word, as Sister Sharon has reminded us, we too can be strong in faith with God. So please stand as we sing our hymn of response. One more step along the world I go. receive the benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen.